once again, welcome to the second webinar series in our four part series for our get out the census, get out the vote effort. Uh, please uh, uh, provide your name, your tribal affiliation and organization by uh, entering it in the chat box. Uh, you can find that by pressing the chat box uh, symbol below and uh, entering it, uh, uh, your information in that room. We'll give you a few moments to, to uh, uh, get started with that process and we'll begin shortly. We, we'll be respectful of your time. We have a lot of good information to share with you and we're looking forward to getting started. So if you'll uh, uh, enter your information, we'll begin. A few housekeeping rules. Attendees are automatically muted when you join the Zoom room. If you're calling uh, in on your line, that's if you're uh, using your laptop to join. If you're calling in by phone, please mute your phone line. Uh, if you want to ask questions uh, during the webinar, uh, we ask that you type them into the chat box and we'll carefully monitor the chat box to make sure that during Q&A, all your questions are answered. The slides and the recording will be available after the webinar and uh, uh, posted to our website um, on uh, 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 the landing page for the Get Out the Census, Get Out the Vote uh, projects. Um, they'll be available uh, pretty rapidly, so uh, keep your eye out for that. That's pretty much all of our housekeeping. Finally, uh, if you note the control bar, at the bottom of your screen, a few items about uh, mute, again, muting your audio. Um, when you open the participant box, um, that allows you to give nonverbal feedback in case you want to indicate a, a, a response, but necessarily uh, don't have, uh, want to chat or add verbiage. And then finally, the, the control bar at the bottom of the screen has uh, the chat feature where you click on that to enter the chat box and you can choose in the chat box to either message everyone or to message uh, particular uh, uh, participants in the uh, chat room or in the Zoom room, I'm sorry. So, so we look forward to uh, an engaging conversation as we get underway today. The National Council of Urban Indian Health is a 501c3 organization, a member organization founded in 1998 by uh, urban uh, uh, American Indian leaders. Uh, to address health concerns and uh, uh, particularly uh, provide uh, uh, culturally competent uh, health care to urban American Indians. There are 41 member organizations that are UIOs uh, across the nation serving in some 22 different states. We are um, actively engaged in, in advocacy, uh, technical assistance, uh, peer sharing and as our network and and projects like, for example, this Get Out the Census, uh, Get Out the Vote project. Um, I'm uh, uh, happy to uh, introduce uh, our, our host for the meeting. Uh, um, my name is Mark Clark. I am the Senior Program Manager for the Technical Assistance Center here at Nikui. And also uh, hosting is Sabu Kuyumian. He is the Public Health Associate at the National Council of Urban Indian Health in the Technical Assistance and Research Center. Thank you, Mark. Uh, greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, and I just echo what Mark has said. Um, thank you for joining our second webinar uh, session of a four session series that we have on Get Out the Vote and Get Out the Census. Uh, efforts for uh, you, uh, building capacity for our urban Indian programs and uh, throughout Indian country to um, make sure that uh, that were that native folks are counted and they're registered and they're represented. So, uh, without further ado, I would like to present um, our um, presenters today: um, Maria uh, E. Boyd, uh, former tribal partner specialist for the U.S. Census and um, Gaylene uh, Krauser, uh, ED of the Kansas City Indian uh, Center on uh, best practices um, 
for urban Indian organizations on pushing uh, census completion efforts using a virtual platform and local coalition building. Um, without further ado, I would like to now hand it over to Maria so she could uh, share a little bit about uh, some things that would help all folks on today's uh, call. Be sure to begin recording. Awesome. Thank you all, first and foremost, for having me today. Um, I just want to make everybody aware that I am um, presenting in an informal capacity for Census Bureau today. So uh, my tenure with the Bureau ended as of Saturday. So when committing to this, I didn't want to, you know, pass it up and not attend. Obviously, the information that I accumulated during my tenure um, is really valuable to tribal people. So thank you for having me. Um, if you want to move to the next slide, please. So obviously when dealing with any audience, we wanna gauge uh, what social media tools that we need. So we wanna identify how to use a platform and what platforms to use. Next slide. So the social network toolkit. Um, so when dealing with, I had about roughly um, 150 partners. So I overseen the entire state of Kansas and then I overseen uh, 18 tribes in Oklahoma and I helped with part of Montana um, towards the end of my tenure. Um, so when dealing with that, we all had the same uh, ideals and ideas for what and how to penetrate Indian country. So when dealing with a social network toolkit, I wanted to put up here what was most relevant to how we, um, got and uh, gauged our audiences. So with Twitter, so this social media platform, you're basically announcing something, right? We're saying, so I eat fry bread. Um, I'm eating fry bread, right? And then Facebook, this is the, the world renowned platform. Everybody, this is how we gauged a lot of our audiences. I like fry bread. So on Facebook, they basically say, how are you feeling today? What are you thinking today? So that's why we say, I like fry bread. So Zoom, I thought this one was important because this was how I did a lot of the um, virtual stuff. So when we went, needed to um, get a big audience together, Zoom is what we did using Zoom business. And with YouTube, a lot of our tribal people would create a PSA and put it on YouTube and provide it to us. And then we would use these other platforms to get the word out. So that's what you, uh, we use YouTube for. And then my skills include eating fry bread, right? So in LinkedIn, this is a professional platform. Um, so the reason why I put um, my skills include is because we need to know like what you're capable of doing. So in using LinkedIn, um, that's something that's kind of demonstrated on the next slide. If you wanna go to the next one, please. So <clears throat> when you look at this here, um, we want to ask you first and foremost, have you seen these advertisements, census advertisements on these platforms? That's a polling question we've been uh, want to ask you all. If you want to do that real quick and then I'll just go ahead and go over that. Um, do you want to pull the... Who are you pulling up the polling question? It's up, it's up already. It's being pulled. Um. So if you just want to pull the screen with all the rest of the stuff on there with like the little pawn. So when doing um, a lot of the outreach in the meetings and stuff like that, it was Zoom. Obviously, there are other platforms we can use. We can use uh, Microsoft Office. That was something that was pretty prevalent. Um, LinkedIn, obviously, like I said, that was an excellent recruiting resource. So when we needed to get the word out, we went to LinkedIn to try to get professionals to apply. Um, but a recruiting resource to try to get tribal people is obviously going to the tribal council and asking them. We need to know that tribal people, you know, want to contribute. So if we can get tribal councils and convince them, hey, it's important, then obviously that's just as effective as a, as a social media platform. Um, so for YouTube, like I said, we had community members come out and record videos and put that on YouTube for us. That way everybody could access it for free. You know, it didn't cost anything. 
And if you have people in schools like film school, let's say that there's an Indian film school or Indian student in a film school in your area, using YouTube would help them obviously edit their whatever they're going to produce for you. But it would also be um, in the cost of schools would be a partner too. So if you reach out to them, they're more than willing to help generally if you need to. Um, uh, Facebook, obviously, that is the most beneficial platform I think that um, we used with regard to census. Twitter is really uh, more of a personal, um, I approve type thing. So if in a leadership position, Twitter is really important and can be really effective within your communities. So I would encourage using all of that. And then when you actually do get everybody together um, and you need a way to um, track that zoom is really good for that obviously we can see who all the participants are in here and we know the emails that registered um, qr codes or something that's also really good for um, tracking if you want to go ahead and go to the next slide i'll kind of show you what i'm talking about here Um, so when we did pop-up registrations, QR codes were used. So we would hand out a piece of paper. We would identify who was coming through the line for like a food pantry. Um, so engaging audiences is one of the toughest things we need to do, right? Because we need to know who our audiences is prior to engaging them. So for American Indian people, expressing ourselves is something that we all like to do. And um, speaking to the winner of the census uh, was Dana Warrantin. He's actually from my tribe. And I talked to him about it and he was like, you know, he was like, that's the one time when I can actually sit back and um, express myself. You know, I can dance and there's nobody that can stop me or take that away from me. So as American Indian people, we can express ourselves um, through culture, through tradition, through art, through music. So linking social media to tribal competition engages tribal people, not only traditionally, but contemporary, right? So not only do we get the contemporary Indians that are, hey, yeah, I go to Palos and I dance, but you also have them Indians that still sing that don't necessarily go to Palos that can jump in these competitions as well. So um, another means of engaging larger tribal communities is um, trying to get social distance powwow group on, on the page um, and just understanding that they want to be included as um, a part of a mechanism trying to drive a huger force. Not to say, hey, can I use your platform for this, but to, to identify with social, with social distance people that, yeah, we're fighting the same battle. Can we fight this battle together? Um, because I was in a meeting with them as well. And, and when you come to them and ask them to use their platform, it's more so being inclusive. Um, so I think it's important to identify that with um, American Indian communities as well. So you can offer a virtual competition, say hand drum contest, dance contest, um, and maybe a PSA using YouTube, say, hey, you know, can you put out and say, hey, I support this and here's why, and then dance. That's kind of some of the competitions they had on um, the Q&A polling that we just did on the last question, right? Um, concerts, that's something good as well. Um, you can use YouTube for that or even Facebook Live. And an informational scavenger hunt. Um, so the reason I put the informational scavenger hunt on that is because I think it's important that people understand what they're doing and why, right? So historically Indians have history not only with voting and when we were allowed to vote or when we were even counted as American Indian individuals. So I think it's important that when we educate, we continue this education, regardless of, of if it's 2020 and we're still doing the count or if it's past September 30th or October 31st, not sure what the date is there anymore. Um, but regardless of what them dates are, we need to know what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, so if we do an informational scavenger hunt, I think that is a really good thing to do because then people not only participate, but they're learning along the way. If you wanna to go to the next slide, please. Um, so when they asked me to present, um, I did offer um, a different tribal specialist than actual tribal specialist that's still working. And they said, well, they were really um, appreciative of, of the events that you did and they wanted you to talk about that. I said, okay, sure, no problem. Um, as an Indian person, I'm here to help anybody anytime. I don't need compensation for it. I just think it's important, like I said, to, to educate uh, Indian communities and arm us with, with education. So when doing this virtual event, I was like, hmm, what could we do? And I know myself, I, I like bingo. So I was like, well, I start talking to the people around here and they're like, well, I would play bingo, I would play bingo, you know? And I start talking to people at Haskell. They're like, oh, that sounds fun, um, but how to do it, 
right? Everybody was like, well, how are you going to do it? So we looked up digital everything, being that we're trying to figure out um, how to social distance while still being inclusive with everybody. So Zoom, um, and that's kind of why I put Zoom right in the middle there was because of how um, big of a part it played in, in congregating everybody and gathering everybody. Um, so when we met, it was a little bit difficult because we had to try to keep everybody coming in and try to identify who won and stuff like that um, but as long as you have everything set up prior to your event it should be fine um, so we just had them send pictures of their downloaded cards um, and then they'd show that show us then digitally that they won um, so there was two organizations that contributed for this and that was the kansas city indian center and then we had the american indian education and um our American Indian Enterprise and Business Council. And then we had uh, Haskell. So we had Manny. As soon as I asked Manny, I was like, hey, do you want to help us out? You know, I figured he would help get people in. And ultimately, yeah, that's he, be, him being the MC. a lot of people that he knew came into it. Um, so I think when you're dealing with Indian communities, we all want to see somebody we know, somebody we trust. So identifying somebody that um, can relate to you is really important. And um, just using those those virtual platforms will also help just try to um, social distance, but still gauge participation. Uh, next slide, please. And this one, um, so this was a face-to-face -face, uh, gathering. So the, the logo right in the middle there, the Kansas Counts logo was actually done by a Haskell student. His name is Jack Wingle. Um, so we were able to ask him to provide that to us. So he did that for American Indian Enterprise and Business Council, and they were the ones that paid for it. Sorry, there was a bug there. Um, <laughs> um, so when we did this one, uh, I worked at the Indian Center, and that's kind of why I couldn't say no to Gaylene. Gaylene is a really good friend of mine. Um, not only is she my friend, but she was my former boss. Um, and working at the Indian Center, I learned so much about Indian communities, and I learned a lot about myself as well. Um, so, so working there, um, it helped me understand that not only did I come from this, that I'm a product of these services. Um, I had, I had Toys for Tots as well. I grew up on Kamats myself, you know, so I understand how imperative it is sometimes trying to gauge participation and say, hey, we need you to fill this piece of paper out for us. Why? For these programs that you don't understand, you know. Um, that's why I, I want to come back and relate to people and say, hey, it, it, it's, it's hard to understand this sometimes and wrap your mind around it when you don't know where you're going to get your next meal or you don't know where you're going to sleep at night. So when, when putting this event together, I thought, well, what would penetrate the Indian community in Kansas City? And I thought, hey, man, giving these guys food work pretty good. They're all my friends now, you know. <laughs> so I reached out to harvesters and I thought, hey, you know, can we do something that where we can socially distance, but we can still be all inclusive to everybody in Kansas City? You know, and I don't want to say, hey, this is just for Indians. This is for everybody and anybody that's considered low income in the area. Um, so for us, when, when dealing with it, we got NCAI involved. So the National Congress of American Indians actually provided $2,500 for this event here. Um, so the American Indian Enterprise and Business Council pulled that in for us. Um, so John was able to provide us with, with um, gift cards. So when people came up, we distributed $2,500 worth of gift cards. We distributed these t-shirts that says Kansas Counts. Do I have one behind me? I don't think I do. Um, on the back of it, it says we're still here. And in that presentation that Dana Warrington did when he won first for that social distance power, he literally says that in this presentation that we're still here, you know, and this is something that I probably wouldn't be able to say as a, as a census employee, but I'm going to say it now because I'm no longer a census employee. American Indian people are silenced all too much. People take sit down and say, well, I'm not going to stand up and do my count. I'm not going to stand up and vote, but we've been fighting for this vote since how many wars passed? 1924 is when we were when we were finally allowed to be citizens. And in 1930 is when census implemented the blood quantum. Looking back at those histories, it's imperative that Indian people stand up and say, yes, we are still here. Yes, you are going to pay for my services that you said you would take care of for. It's important that Indian people say that, yes, we're still here. We can be counted. You know, and just linking back to the, the sensitivity of data and the data sensitivity issue. I know a lot of people are concerned about what is he going to, what are they going to do with my data? when they get it. 
um, title 13, when I looked at that, I read through the entire, the entire title and at the, the second to the last paragraph in that title identifies that it, it's going to take a congressional movement for that to change. We have more sensitive information on our phones. So I think it's important to relay that. And when we did this September 11th event, I was relaying that to people because they were hesitant, you know, and even if they didn't want to do their census, it, I would say, well, it's okay. I totally understand, you know, but here's why you, sh you should consider doing it. So they would still come through, they would get their food and some of them came back after they got their food and they would do it. Um, they had to think about it for a while. Maybe they went home and talked to a friend or a family member, but that's why it's so imperative to have tribal people on board saying it's okay to do this information, identifying that, yeah, it's okay that we're still here. It's okay to participate. So I think we as community members need to be in our communities expressing that, yeah, it's okay and not expressing, but explaining why it's okay. So when I put together the September 11th event, that was my train of thought. I wanted to be the person right there explaining to people why it's important and then have a whole pe pe bunch of people that were down the way also echoing what I was saying. So when doing this event, it was a collective effort. It was the commissioner's office. It was the Department of Child Family Services. It was the police station in Kansas City. It was census. Census did everything they could to help us here. The headquarters, they reached out and they were sending out boxes of stuff. And I was getting stuff like, oh my God, now what are they sending? You know, so that when we had this event, there was so much good stuff to give the community. We had hats for babies. We had lanyards. We had t-shirts. We had a company donate um, a thousand name brand sunglasses. We had so much good stuff at this event and it was a collective effort. So I just really encourage our communities that to come together and fight the same battle. Um, we're all in it together, and I think it's important just to express, express that and keep educating. Next slide, please. All right, so I'm going to get off of my soapbox. If you all need anything from me, you can certainly reach out um, and let me know if you need anything, and I'm going to hand it over to my former boss and good friend, Ms. Gaylene Krauser. Thank you, Maria. Um, I just want to send my gratitude over to you uh, for agreeing to do this, even though you're no longer a census employee and, uh, and really sharing that good information because I knew you, you were a wealth of information from the, the time that you've been spending out there in the community and, um, and trying to get this, this knowledge out there. Um, to everyone else, thank you for your time and for um, coming to this webinar. Um, uh, my name is Gaylene Krauser. I'm the director at the Kansas City Indian Center, and we're actually located in Missouri, um, but we're less than a mile from the Kansas border. So we, we serve the entire Kansas City metropolitan area. And one of the interesting things is the way they, uh, they divvied us up by, um, in districts this time because Maria was working Kansas um, and Missouri is no longer in that region. Even though we work together um, and she would informally help us out a little bit if I had a question about something or she came across some data, she would email it over to me. But we weren't technically in, in her region and because Missouri doesn't have any tribes, we didn't have a tribal specialist. And so that's kind of one of the things that we always run into at the Indian Center is the lack of representation um, on a state level um, because there aren't any tribes. Everybody was forcibly removed a long time ago. So uh, one of the things that we do is this advocacy for tribal people um, in Missouri, including like with the with the courts and juvenile steering committees and Indian child welfare and um, census engagement like census and um, get out the vote and that sort of thing. So that's one, um, one of the many things we do at the Indian Center. Um, and we just wanna say thank you to, to Maria for kind of stepping outside of the, the box there to help us out uh, because we didn't have a, a tribal specialist here. Um, but we did sit on some um, complete count committees for um, the region and for the city. And that's super important too. So if, you know, 
we have to make those efforts to be included on those committees so that we, our voice is out there. Um, so, so whether it's for census or, or anything else um, in your area, sometimes we have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable and taking those roles um, so that our voice is heard. So we're we'll, we'll on my soapbox here. So <laughs> we'll go ahead and get started with the slides, please. So I know uh, we're talking about local coalition building efforts and uh, Maria uh, gave us some pretty good um, examples of that with, with all the different agencies that she worked with for her in-person event. We also worked a lot with, with other um, Indian serving organizations and like I said, complete count committees and the public library and all kinds of people. Um, but one of the other things that we did were, were part of this uh, cohort with the National Urban Indian Family Coalition, as is NAKUI. Um, and you know, we, we had an opportunity to meet about census and get out the vote and share some ideas. And so a lot of these ideas that we used came from some really smart people that were also in the room um, that we were able to visit with before, before COVID. And um, so we're just really grateful that, uh, that we, we still had these folks to, um, to get ideas from. And, uh, you know, plagiarism is, is not a, a <laughs> good word, but, you know, we, we, we borrowed their stuff. You know, if, if they sent something, you know, on, on their Facebook and we thought it was cool, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're sharing it too. So it was really nice to, to kind of have that ability to, um, share other people's stuff and um, Rio would, was really great about putting things in a drop box where we could pull out information and use it and and they've got the toolboxes and the um, toolkits and stuff like that and um, so the local coalition building was really good for us here um, in Kansas City um, but just important is to, to lean on your relatives, you know, so whether they're in Denver or, or Phoenix or Minneapolis or wherever they happen to be, um, they were doing some really cool stuff um, with their PSAs and their um, posts and, and we absolutely shared um, everybody else's stuff too. So next slide. Um, one of the things that we did on our social media was we tried to incentivize our posts. So we did, um, we created polls and just little $25 gift cards for a weekly poll that we did every week. And one of the interesting things was people like to get engaged and some of them um, would just donate their $25 gift card back and we'd say, hey, you won, you know, share your address and we'll mail it to you. They said, Oh no, just go ahead and keep it. And, and we got to run that little uh, poll for a couple weeks longer than, than we originally thought we were gonna be able to do it just because people were super generous like that. But um, so in addition to um, incentivizing them, we just tried to keep them real simple um, so that people could get the answer pretty easily, but we were still imparting that information. And one of also helped was to try to use humor or uh, pop culture or relatable topics. And we got a lot more responses that way. Um, so, you know, even though people knew that fry bread recipes was not really what the census was after, it kind of, um, they had fun just participating in that. And this was one of the first polls that we did just to kind of break the ice and get people used to, to engaging with us and, and doing these polls. and. Uh, um, so this is one of the more popular ones and, you know, and in the comments, they were, you know, we we're always joking about, you know, oh yeah, the government's trying to steal fry bread recipes because it kind of goes back to that trust that Maria was talking about earlier about, you know, what information that we're willing to share online and, you know, we're not all willing to share a fry bread recipe. So, uh, 
So there was a little bit of talk about that. And we did these polls for a number of months. So we were able to do answer or ask questions and get the same information out um, in, in various ways. We asked it in, in a number of ways, especially the stuff that, that was the most important for our community to get. Um, so um, before we go to the next slide, we have a poll question um, on that. So when completing your U.S. Census form, you can identify self with more than one tribal affiliation, true or false. And so I'll give everybody a minute to, um, to test your knowledge on this one and, and we'll get the results on that. And I'll answer it to you. Because that, um, this is one of our, our Facebook poll questions that we did um, kind of early on to kind of gauge where um, what people what people knew about the census. Do we have those um, responses yeah, people, in? People are still taking them right now. Still just giving it like another minute, but I'll I'll show in a second. Okay. So I'll try to think of something to say. <laughs> Uh, Talk about here, fire bread recipes. Here's the results. Okay. So this is kind of uh, the same results that we got from our poll question um, when, we, when we put it out on our Facebook. And so 77% um, of the participants on this webinar said false. Go ahead, next slide. And 58% said it was false on our um, Facebook poll, but it's actually true. And it's one of the things that I think that they've changed recently. So you can, um, you can self-identify as more than one tribe and they don't check enrollment numbers. Um, they don't um, like verify with the tribe that you're, you're actually a tribal member. So, um, so like I'm enrolled at Standing Rock, but I'm also Oglala. And so when I fill out my census, I can put Standing Rock and I can also put Oglala and, and both tribes will benefit from that. Um, and they're not gonna go say, oh, well, she doesn't have an enrollment number with the Oglalas. Um, so that's one of the things that we, we had to hit a number of times on you know, our, our social media getting that information out to people so that they knew that they could um, identify as more than one tribe. And um, in the um, paper form, they've actually added a lot more room on the paper form where you can, where you can fill that out. And then online, it just kind of just keeps going and going. You can add those characters on that. So, um, uh, that's one of the things that we're just going to have to keep telling people because uh, there's still that, obviously there's still that, um, the belief that we can only identify as one. So, all right, next slide, please. So, um, this was one of our best um, far-reaching um, social media posts and it was to um, answer a census or a, a survey monkey survey and get um, a free t-shirt. So we partnered with a local artist, uh, TK Richardson, to do a ledger drawing. And so that's the Kansas City skyline. And then he drew the dancers and, and that in front of it. And actually, I was like, oh, I should have got a better view of that and let's see if I can get it here. But it's really a cool design. And people were like, can we buy that? Can we buy that? <laughs> it's like, no, fill out the survey. And basically what the survey was, was uh, all that information that we thought was important to share. So the, you know, there was the obvious questions of, you know, where are we going to mail your t-shirt and what size? Um, but the, did you know that you can 
identify as more than one tribe? And did you know, um, um, that you can resubmit your census questionnaire if you didn't include all your household members or, or you, you filled it out incorrectly, you can resubmit your census. And so we, we put that information in that survey because normally, um, you know, we would have gone, had in-person events, we would have been at powwows, we would have been lots of local places to engage with people and, uh, and to get these t-shirts um, given out but you know, with the pandemic, we had to figure out a new way and um, get uh, get these mailed out to folks, and, um, and and still get have a way to get that information to them. So that's what we we did on that. And I have an example of the some of the survey questions a little bit later in the presentation, so you can see those. But um, uh, let's see. I think I, that was all I had on that one, but but that particular post reached uh, it had a reach of nearly 1,800 people. Just that one post, because people were just like, "Yay, t-shirts!" That's the the love language in Kansas City is t-shirts. So, <laughs> next slide, please. So I talked earlier about what uh, the the posts that performed well. And it was stuff like this that was relatable and maybe had a little bit of humor to it. Um, and it, you know, so when anytime you mention fry bread, people just are like, ah. Um, so this, and um, you know, I probably shouldn't say, but uh, because this is being recorded, but we we might have taken some, you know, some Arlene pictures and stuff like that. And, <laughs> you know, talked about um, movies and that sort of thing that people relate to. And um, the, the things that were funny, people just, you know, they shared it. And so we're waiting for somebody to make a meme with the buffalo and the pants and somehow relate that to census or getting out the vote. And so kind of putting a call out there to you <laughs> to make one of those. Um, but if it's funny or um, pop culture or relatable, uh, people share it and, you know, get that information out there. Next slide, please. One of the other ones that did really well um, is anything that has um, indigenous art. And so this is the uh, National Urban Indian Family Coalition. Uh, um, did this one with an indigenous artist and and those just you know go gangbusters too um, people really like to see art by our people um, so whether it's the ledger art or you know this kind of stuff it's uh you know you get one of the you know you get indian art and you slap it on a t-shirt and you know we all we all kind of go nuts for that and and the information gets shared and and it gets out there Okay, next slide, please. So these are just a couple of the questions that we had from our survey, you know, letting people know what that data is going to be used for. Um, so we do urban, um, we do behavioral health at the Indian Center, and then we have an Indian health clinic not too far um, from us in Lawrence. And so I think when people have that understanding that those kind of programs are, are very much dependent on the data and, and that uh, our population, we have to justify it to get federal funding, um, we have to make sure that people have that understanding, kind of like Maria was saying earlier, of why that we need them to, to share their data. Uh, so, if they know it affects their education or their housing or or the Indian Health Clinic that they go to, they're more likely to, to be willing to participate. Um, one of the other questions that, um, that we wanted to make sure that people were aware is that, um, that in order to be considered an American Indian household, that person one 
has to be the one that to um, has to be American Indian um, on their race and list their tribe. So um, a lot of people don't know that. And we found that a lot of times, um, even the, the presenters and the trainers from census didn't bring this up and um, weren't, weren't aware of it themselves. And so this is another one of those things that, um, that we really had to put out there multiple times so that people we're aware of it that they, you know, that they need to be. If you're American Indian, you need to be person one on your census, and it didn't matter if they were the, um, you know, if your kids are American Indian, you know, if they were over the age of 14, they could be person one. So, um, and that also, and also to let them know that if they didn't put person one uh, as American Indian, that they can do um they can do their census again and then the, like the last submission will be the one that's counted so they can call back or get back online or whatever and do their census again and um, make that change so that the american indian households are counted and um we had uh, i want to say about a dozen questions it wasn't it wasn't a hard survey for folks to do but it just those those handful of things that we really needed them to be aware of, that's what we included in, in that um, census survey. And we also, um, we're talking about census right now, but we also do the get out the vote um, engagement with our community. And you, doing surveys like this is one of the ways that you can incentivize vote um, engagement because it's actually illegal to be, uh, to be like, oh, register to vote and you get a t-shirt. You can't do that. Um, it's against the law. But you can say, hey, do you wanna take this survey or do you wanna um, sign up so that I can um, send you reminder mailers or, or you know, send you a text or a phone call or whatever like that? Those you can incentivize. And so that's one of the ways that we do, you know, give people a t-shirt to get them to our table to talk about voting is to say, hey, you want to complete this little quick survey for a t-shirt, and then we can, you know, ask them if they want to register to vote and that sort of thing. So anyway, uh, just wanted to throw that out there for um, future reference. All right, next slide. So um, just a couple of important things to consider um, is when we're giving feedback um, on this census um, for the uh, for this decade, um, that we're we're calling attention to the to the areas that can be improved for next time. I know it's ten years from now, but um, they're so important that that we need to make sure we're using our voice to to give them the opportunity make the changes to some of these these things like the training. So. Um, the census presenters and the workers can inform people about information that's pertinent to American Indians, especially in urban areas, because um, tribes have the benefit of a, um, of a tribal specialist and um, generally speaking, and, and they, and I'm just hoping they all have the same heart for it that Maria did so to make sure that they, people are getting that information and they're really um, sharing it with the community, but but a lot of a lot of the uh, the ones in the urban areas, they're they're not really thinking about American Indian people when they're out um, doing these presentations and giving these trainings for complete count committees and hard to count um, agencies and that sort of thing. And so we just need to make sure that we're letting them know, hey, you, you need to include that information every time because you don't know. You know who's serving American Indians in your in your area here, and then also um, that making sure that our communities know what the this what the census data is used for. Um, like the 2010 census data was used to fund the COVID payments for tribes, and and for urban resources. So when they know what the what the funding is 
connected to those to those numbers and especially if it affects them or benefits them in any way it it makes them more likely to want to help um, participate so all right i think that is it and um the next slide is for Nakui. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Gaylene. Thank you, Maria. Great um, presentations, great information. Um, and I know that there are some questions uh, that I want to give some time for folks to uh, ask. So these are just more uh, resources that we've pulled together um, with through the National Urban Indian Family Coalition. Uh, NCI, NCAI, and uh, Native People Count um, for, for, for those who want to figure, like, learn other strategies outside of what was taught today uh, to kind of get the final push out <laughs> this next day and a half. And so, um, next slide, please. And with that, there's also resources we included here for Get Out the Vote strategies um that also can be used both from a social media aspect of it that's native focused and um you know uh, even activities on the ground what can you do in a time of covid and some uh get out the vote activities that could be done so um these are just some resources for everyone to have and this will be in a we'll be providing this to all of you um and sending out an email, but also just it'll be on our site and on our main um, hub uh, for everyone to have to have access to the recording and this and this PowerPoint. Um, next slide, please. So I wanted to open up the floor for everyone to have questions. If there's any questions uh, to our presenters today, um, I know that there's one that was uh, asked earlier on. Uh, to uh, Gaylene and Maria. I they think this might be to Gaylene, but um, uh, it, so, uh, Gerardo had asked um, if uh, there can be a copy of the surveys that you guys put together to educate people, uh, Native folks on, if that could be something that could also be shared um, uh, to, 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 to participants today, if that's something that's okay with, with you, Gaylene. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can email it to you and then you, maybe you can send it out with the slides. Yeah, I'll definitely okay. do that. And then uh, Andrew um, from Nukui had mentioned that the census announced this morning that they plan on ending all data collection by next Monday, October 5th. Um, and there's an ongoing lawsuit about the motivations and impacts changing a deadline, but seems hard to count on any okay, and it says <laughs> on any, any of that, but he wanted to kind of share that a little bit with everyone. Um, and if there's anything else that uh, any questions that anybody else has, please uh, you could unmute yourself and ask Gaylene and Maria straight without typing, or if you'd like to type in your response to any questions you might have. The floor is open to everyone else. Well, in response to Andrew's question, um, tomorrow we're actually doing a um, socially distant ice cream social. So we got a, um, a food truck and, and an ice cream truck and uh, we've got some tablets and and um we've, we've still got a few t-shirts left to give out and so we're just said hey you know come grab an ice cream you can fill out your census here um you know if we have any questions about it we can help you out um so i know it's probably a little bit late for people to plan things like that but if there's any way to do like a um an in-person event for the folks that are uh, um on it, you know, might be able to get a little bit that way. But we kind of found that incentivizing it, even if it's just like a drawing of, hey, you know, you can win this gift card or this certain thing or even a t-shirt, um, 
you know, if you fill out the census and, and most of the time you have to just take their word for it that they did do it because even that confirmation page um, still provides some, some data that is identifying. So um, people might not be willing to, to share that with you to kind of prove that they filled it out. But, um, but those are the only ideas I have on, on trying to just get a, the last minute people. Yeah, thanks. That's helpful. And if anyone has any uh, suggestions or something that has worked for, for you and your, at your urban in your organization, I'm more than happy just to type it in to share with folks. Um, I want to kind of let everyone know uh, on our, uh, our session three and session four, of our upcoming uh, Get Out the Vote uh, Zoom webinars slash Facebook live events coming up. So the next one is on best practices for urban indie organizations on how to leverage your social media accounts to get out the vote. So uh, we will be sending out um, uh, promotional uh, information on that uh, as well. Uh, so keep, you know, keep a lookout. Um, and that will be on uh, Friday, October 16th, uh, 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and then we have a session four uh, that uh, we're aiming for on October 28th on best practices in increasing uh, Native youth civic engagement and empowering um, the Native vote. So um, these are our upcoming um, uh, sessions. And um, Mark, can you uh, uh, switch the slide one more time. Next slide, please. Um, uh, let's see. Um, having uh, having a, a little trouble with the bank. There we go. Okay. And uh, just a reminder, right, like we have this uh, uh, Take Action uh, initiative uh, with uh, the National Urban Indian Family Coalition. Um, so, you know, to making sure that we get out the vote. So there are some um, key uh, links here that, and that the National Urban uh, Indian Family Coalition has to, to check your registration for voting to get your, to complete your census, um, and really just trying to share this with five other people and spread the word. Um, I think I just echoing what Gaylene and Maria said, but this is a very important time. This only happens uh, once every 10 years. So any type of strategy that you learn from today and uh, you take fr from that, I think is, is helpful and just making sure to, to make more, encourage more people and more native folks to, to be counted um, for the future of Indian country. And so I, on the I wanted to re remind projects that when they uh, identify their get out the census effort, they should ensure that the National Urban uh, uh, Indian Family Coalition is acknowledged for not only its funding, but its support uh, as a, a, a national coalition partner. And the, the Culture Family Foundation has funded all these efforts. So those, the, we should always make sure that we acknowledge those two uh, uh, funding organizations. I see that there's someone in the chat room, um, Sabu, so, Sonia. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, if you wanna speak, go ahead, because I'm here, your mic's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was wondering, can you turn this into something that we can share on our sites through our social media that's still a clickable link? Um, that way we're capturing all the exact information, plus we're still acknowledging them and we can add, you know, because it's going out on our sites, it'll already have our logo on there um, as part of where it's coming from. That way we're, we're um, encouraging the active use of those specific links, if that's what needs to be done. That way it'll go faster than us trying to copy and paste anything that you send to us. Um, just a suggestion. I think that would be helpful, at least for us. I'd appreciate that. 
And I can mm -hmm. here really quickly, Sonia. Uh, my name is Zipporah Full. I'm the Director of Technical Assistance here at Nakui. And yes, so that slide with the clickable links is actually included in your welcome folder. So if you take a peek in there, there's a PowerPoint slide that you can add to all of your presentations. Um, all of those links do take you to those um, items where we're directing traffic to. The, that was the original package that came with our award, our notice mm -hmm. of award? Okay, yes. got it, got yeah. it. Yeah, so we tried to that. like make it a one-stop shop, so everything is in there. Um, I think we'll definitely also need to get you guys the um, NUIFC uh, imaging box. Uh, they're using box to house their images, so like that image you see there with the girl and her braid, all of those images will also be added. Um, if you did have a welcome call just recently, it should also be on the welcome call as a one, like a, a clickable link within a section of the notes that we had sent over. Um, but we can definitely make sure we give you guys all of those artworks and that logo as well. That would be great. Thank you. Um, Mark, I'm not positive if it was in there, but if not, could you shoot it over to us? Sure, sure. It would. It was part of the welcome toolkit. It was also in the, the notes that we sent as a follow on as a, as a PDF. It should have been clickable in those notes. But I'll, I'll make sure you get those electronically once more uh, and, and, and involve a UN, uh, both Gerardo uh, as a recipient to so make sure you, you get it. Great. And access to the um, to the box where the images are. That would be really great. I think these are pretty powerful statements, so it'd be nice to be able to utilize cool. them as much as possible, even if it is only until Monday. It looks like Monday's the new deadline. So yeah, um. absolutely. <laughs> I'll make sure you. I'll be glad to get that drop the Dropbox link. I'll I'll put that in the uh, email I send you as well, Sonia. Perfect. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Thank you, Sonia. And thank you, Zip, for 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 adding uh, a clarification. Thank you for your for your leadership. Um, and on that note, I think we've hit the hour. And um, uh, please look look out for uh, the PowerPoint slides and um, and the recording to send to all of you. And I'll we'll do our try to do that diligently since. Um, census either is over tomorrow or Monday. So <laughs> we'll be working hard to get that off um, very quick to everyone who joined today. Uh, so you have that moving forward. All right, absolutely. Great, thank, thank, thank you, you so everyone. Much. Good job, great. Thank you, everyone. I'm glad you're able to join us. We'll see you Bye. for session number three. Have a good one, everybody.